All right, so continuing from the last video, you can see here that the code is pretty much left just like before. So a small thing that we can do here is similar to functions and defining the arguments, we can do that with our structs. So in here, I'm gonna say that these are all wheels. Okay. So that's one, one small thing that will speed up compile time for the struct. And another thing is I was talking about the default constructor. So when you're creating a struct and you don't provide a constructor for it, so that's, that's uh, constructor is a function that is named after the struct. So this is prism. You can see this function is also called prism. And in this case, the default is it will take in the number of arguments that is equal to the number of field values. So this has length, width, and height. It needs three values and it'll pass those to length, width, and height respectively. But let's say we don't want to do that. Let's say we want a constructor that doesn't take in parameters. We can just call prism and not pass anything, but it does stuff, we, we can do that. So let's define a constructor. So we have a function, we're gonna call it prism. This one's gonna take no parameters. And when it does that, it will create a new instance, which will be one, one, one. We call end and we're good there. So if I call that, so you can see here, now, now there's, there's a squiggly here. So once you create a new constructor of your own, the default constructor disappears. So you can't do stuff with this anymore. Um, so I have to get rid of all these values. This should be fine now. And we call it. And you can see it changed, right? So the volume is now just using these 111 values because that's what gets passed when you just call this prism. And that's just one. And then same idea for this. It does the surface area with those new parameters. Okay, let's say we want other, other constructors. So in this case, it does take a length, width, and height. So this will be an L, this will be a real, two columns, real, real, and H. Call an end here. Okay, and let's say we want to have some control now, some control going on in this. So prisms are objects, and I mean like actual literal objects, and you can't have a negative length. That makes no sense. And let's say we also have a requirement that the length has to be longer than the width. L is less than zero, or W is less than zero, or H is less than zero, error, group error, can't have negative values for uh, length. Let's call them lengths. <laughs> okay, so there's one check. Else if, and let's say if width is less than length, then throw error. Can't have shorter width than length and else new length with height same end and that should be good okay so we have this prism here and then I'm called p1 First, I'm just gonna fill the requirements. So that should work. And we'll call call the heights in this case. And all right. 
So that worked out. And I'm going to go into these error statements. So now we have two constructors. And I should show that the other one still exists. T dot and let's see, we'll call that one's height as well to show that they're different. Okay, one three. So this one still exists, right? So we have one prism instance, and this is P, and it's using this constructor to make it. And then we have another prism instance using these values, which is using this constructor function. And this constructor has some control to it, right? So first it requires that these have to be positive values. That's what this if statement here, and then it has this error. So this error catch is a way that you can produce an error to the to the shell in this case, and this will be displayed to the user. So let's say I wanted to put a negative value here as a check. Oh, it threw an error. You can see it says explicitly what we said, can't load negative values for lengths. So this is a good way to have users not do stuff that you don't want them to do, that you just throw an error to them, say, hey, you can't do this. It's also a good check for yourself. Let's say you make this code three months in the past, now you're working with it again, and you're just working with it and you think you know everything about it, and all of a sudden you run into this error catch and you realize you forgot this requirement, but then because of the error catch, you, you remember and you're able to uh, to fix it out. So they're, they're good for error checking yourself, but also error checking other users. This is one check that you can't have negative values, and then this is another check where you're requiring that the width can't be less than the length. So if this comes out to being true, then it will produce this error. And then if none of these happen, then it will just create the new instance. And that's what this new function does. This is a way of saying I want to create a new instance of Prism. Okay, so there is another type of struct called a mutable struct. So let's say I make another one called a circle. It has a radius. And now in this case, I can have my constructor outside, actually. So I'll call it circle const. We're going to pass a real to it, a circle r, and that'll be the end. Okay, and circles, circle const. We're going to pass a radius of five. Print ln c dot radius. C dot radius. Okay, so you see that worked. So what happened here is this is mutable now, and I'm going to show how that changes the structs from Prism. And you can see I have the constructor outside, which essentially works just like these constructors, where we passed a value and that value gets set to one of the field values, field, yeah, field values of the struct. Now, because it's mutable, I can call c.radius and set it to six now and I just copy this line and if I do and do a reprint you can see it will change and that allows me to go into the struct change its field values just by calling the parameters and change them however I would like to I can if I wanted to change this to a character all of a sudden I can do that as well and you just did that because you see I didn't actually type this as well like how these are. So that's a mutable struct and 
if I were to show again with p.length, and let's say I want to change this to 5, this is going to produce an error. Alright, it's going to say set field immutable struct. Okay, so mutable structs are a thing, and you can make the constructors outside. From convention, being able to change the field values of your struct is considered not good. <laughs> you shouldn't allow other users to go into your struct and change the values because maybe they just shouldn't be doing that. So especially when you're going into code and then going back to my dirt example, the density of dirt shouldn't be changing. Maybe they have a new type of dirt, so they should create a new instance with those new values that it has, but they shouldn't be going into the other instance and changing that because that can lead to errors along the way. If you're doing all these computations with your certain instance and all of a sudden you're changing it, you're going to be thinking you're working with dirt one when you're actually working with dirt two and yeah. So that's a mutable struct. And there's still more intricacies to structs, but I'm going to halt it there and I think in the next video, I'll go into another layer of structs and probably start touching onto modules. So I'll see you there.